What's up, divas? What's up, divas? Oh, guys, what's up? What's up? What's up? So your girl is back. Real Talk Wednesday. I am looking. Look, okay. First of all, let's just get this out of the way. I am tired. Okay. I have been like lack of sleep. No, no. I'm I'm lying. I'm lying. I do get sleep. I just don't get a lot of sleep. So I don't go to sleep till like two o'clock in the morning. Then I have to wake up at like 6 30, 7 o'clock to bring my daughters to school. So I only be getting like four and a half hours of sleep. And you know what I'm saying? So I'm really tired. Um I have been working really hard on a lot of wigs. Okay. So I'm really tired from that. And that is the reason why like I haven't been doing like a lot of videos like every day like everyday upload for like the past week, two, couple of weeks, excuse me, because I have been really busy trying to catch up, trying to do different wigs um, for myself, for my website, for companies. And plus, you know what I'm saying? I do, um, you know, I have, I have a family, so I have a lot of things to do. Um, and also I am part of a, I am like, I don't know if you want to come, I'm not an ambassador and I'm not an affiliate, but I am like part of a company, a wig company. Um, so I'm more or less their liaison, their go-to person. Um, and this wig company is, you know, based in another country. So I do a lot of work for them too. Um, so, you know, I'm tired. I'm really, really am tired. Um, my love life is still great. If that's what y'all think. And like, girl, you know, you don't be going to sleep until such and such time in the morning because of such and such. That might be part of it too. Okay. And we'll put a girl out, knock a girl right out. But I'm just like really tired. You know, I have to be running around. I just came from the dentist with my son. He got a, um, he got a crown put on and then we went to the 99 cents only store. Let me tell y'all something. First of all, stay the fuck out of the Dollar Tree in the 99 cents only store. Y'all know I'm, I love those stores and I don't really go as often as I used to. You know, like I don't put out those videos anymore for the Dollar Tree and stuff. Only because, listen, you can find yourself going way over budget at the Dollar Tree or the 99 cents only store. And I felt like, you know what, I got all the things that I could possibly use or need for my house out of the 99 cents only store or the dollar tree as far as household decor or anything like that you know what I'm saying so mainly what i go now for is like household cleansing products or like food you know what i'm saying not like anything that would be like hey girls get this you know what i'm saying but i do have a video that i did um do some you know basically um a DIY and hopefully I will put the video up soon because I'm not really good with editing. Um, not, well, I am, but you know, I'm just, I've been really tired. Plus I'm getting really tired of editing the videos in my room. It's just so much work with the lighting and stuff and it's starting to really irritate me. Sometimes it'll look blue, sometimes it'll look green. So, you know, I'm just really irritated about that. Um, but so I've been trying, and plus I have my room that I had to get together, you know, I had to basically put my room back together out of, out of furniture and I'm still like decorating it and stuff. So, you know, but you know, I have had some projects, but other than that, my week has been fine. I still got on this wig. Okay. And it's called, um, wigs only.com, but I think I did put it in my, my other video. I pinned the comment. Um, the reason why I have this on now is because it's time to take it off. Okay. So yeah, I did go to the dentist with my son and I've had this wig on for like a week now. I told y'all bitches, y'all say, ah, listen, got to be glam force, the pink one. Other than that, um, like my, my day has been chill. It's been actually really cool. Um, you know, I'm about to go downstairs and work on some wigs. So I'm going to make this real talk really, really quick because I, I really wanted to do some videos today, but I didn't get the opportunity because like I said, I had to bring my son to the dentist and I didn't, I didn't get up and get dressed. Well, I got up and got dressed, but I didn't do my makeup and I had on the same wig. So it was like, you know, I'm going to just rock this out today and I'm going to do other things besides work, make a video. I have enough videos to edit. Let me just go ahead and work on what I have already. But other than that, you know what I'm saying? My week has been actually really good. Um, ain't no drama with nobody. Ain't nobody starting no dumb shit with me. Thank the Lord. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I'm not really into all of that. I'm not for. I'm not up for it this week. I really am not. You ever get in one of those moods where you just don't want to be bothered with anyone? It's like, just, you know what? Please leave me alone. Please just stay away from me. You know what I'm saying? I, I've already had, like, enough going on in my life. I really just would rather just relax, sit back, and not be bothered with anyone. This is how I feel sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, please don't joke with me. Just, I just don't want any nonsense, no foolishness. It's great when you can have a week without any type of foolishness, okay? Oh, the girl sent me some pictures with her, with her email here. Okay, let's read this. Huh, Chia. Hmm, she sent me enough pictures, okay? All right. Let me get to reading this email. I don't really have no news to share with you guys about myself, you know? Saying I've been chilling. I got me some soy pills and some motherfucking soy estrogen lotion because the goddamn um, estrogen patches that I have to wear because, you know, I don't have no inside lady parts. You know, I can't have no more kids. That shit is not working. A bitch be waking up. I be so sweaty and wet when I wake up, drenched in sweat when I wake up in the middle of the night, like twice a night. During the daytime, I get hot flashes and it gives me a headache. And let me tell y'all, that is one thing that you do not want to have. I did not know it was like that, but it's not really bad. But if you're having like four or five of them, five of the five, six, seven of them in a day, and then they make you head headache, they give you a headache and they make you nauseous and dizzy. Trust me, that would be enough. So... I've been trying other alternatives, and it's been cutting it down, but, you know, if you guys got some type of remedy suggestions for uh, menopause, hot flashes, please tell me, because I, listen, it's making me really irritable. I'm already a bitch, okay? Let's just be real about this shit. I'm already a bitch. I'm already bitchy all the time, okay? So, it makes me very irritable. Okay, to the point where sometimes I don't want to be bothered. All right, it's made me gain like eight, seven, nine pounds. Okay, eight pounds. It's made me gain like eight pounds. All right, um, it has messed up my sex life, but I just noticed that when I don't have the patch on or the patch is like time for me to change. I get really emotional sometimes. I get overly emotional. And sometimes I just notice that I could cry easily. And like, I don't really, I'm, I'm not that type of person where you're going to make me cry like that. Like, I will cry. But like, you know, it's that just, not that it takes a lot. But, you know, I'm going to just say this. If I could change and have my motherfucking period. Without the issues and the problems that I went through with the period, then I would be really, really happy. You know what I'm saying? I could deal with that once a month shit. But to be having hot flashes every day and um, it's just not cool. I, I'm just like really not comfortable with it. Okay. Um, I'm just really not comfortable with it. It kind of is like really fucking with me. Like health wise like you know what I'm saying like I'm tired of feeling sick like five six times out of the day you know I'm though granted it'll last me for like 10 minutes it does get really annoying especially if you're out in public and you're driving and then all of a sudden you just break out in a sweat and you just feel like you're about to pass out like it's not a good feeling so I'm really trying to find something to help me cope with this so if you guys got suggestions then let me know um and I went ahead and me and my husband did a DIY on my desk in here it was an Ikea desk. It was white. And I decided that I wanted it to be silver metal, silverish to match the rest of my decor in the room because it was white. It, you know, basically went with my old room. So I actually, um, we, I don't know what you want to call this, but um, it actually looks really nice. It get it's, It looks really nice, but I'm noticing that what it does to the picture is it changed like the coloring in it because it's kind of like a silvery, so it's kind of like giving me like this hue of light underneath me, which is really weird. And not to mention the bags that I have under my eyes. So, you know, I'm really tired. Um, my husband, he is at actual school right now. 
for refrigeration. So it's part of like refrigeration, not like refrigerators, but you know, cooling, like for your home, refrigeration, all that type of stuff. He's at school for that. So he goes to school, he works. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really nice to have a good man that is willing to do stuff and wants to do things with himself and his family. Like, yeah, good vibe, good feeling. But anyway, so we about to get into this because I have a lot to do. Plus, I got to go to court in the morning with my son. I'm telling you guys, a bitch life just don't never stop. Like, I need a vacation. All right. I, I seriously need a vacation. And that's what I've been thinking about is just not doing YouTube for like two weeks, like not uploading no videos, no nothing for like two weeks because... You know, I have a lot of things that I need to do. Plus, I'm really, you know, I've been through a lot and I'm tired and I have a lot going on. And I really think like it's time for me to just chill and take a break. And I noticed this with myself because when my attitude is like, I don't want to do this right now. I don't feel like editing a video. Then that's when I realized like, you know what, April, it's time for you to step back and relax for a minute. And so I'm thinking that that's what I'm probably going to end up doing. Um, You know, next month is June. I'll be 45 years old. So... I'm not saying I need to go anywhere because I don't. A bitch will stay home and lay her funky ass right on the couch and take naps all day. That's what I want to do. But, yeah, so, you guys, but knowing me and my family, I don't think that will be possible. However, school is almost out. This is the last week of school for my daughters, so I ain't got to get up no more. Well, I, I mean, I still do, but, you know what I'm saying, I ain't got to get up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. It'll be like 8.30, 9 o'clock. A bitch needs some type of rest. So let's get into this real talk, you guys, so that way, you know, we can move on to the next. If you have a real talk that you want me to talk about, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk, so that way I know that it's a real talk. And if you want to change the name of those people who are you're talking shit about, because that's what y'all be doing, y'all talk shit, because I talk shit, then you can always tell me that you change the names. But if you don't change the names in your email, the 99 point. 9% baby daddies, I will change it for you. Baby daddies, yes. Baby daddies. Okay, first of all, let me tell you about this email. This bitch wrote me this long email, okay? And when I call you a bitch, it's not because I'm trying to be mean to you. But she wrote the font, the font so motherfucking small that a bitch can barely see. Now, y'all know I wear bifocals. Like, I have glasses that are for far and for near sighted. So, my glasses is downstairs right now. I cannot make, I mean, I can see it, but like, dang, you really trying to blind the bitch. So, I got, I'm going to have to open it up and go from side to side just so that I can read this freaking email. Well, I'm a, you know what? I'm going to do the phone like this. Yeah. Okay. Let's just get into this. Hey, April. First, I want to say that I love your channel and how real you are. I honestly watch your videos and look at you like a big sister. You are so strong and I admire you for that. Okay, now let me get into why I'm writing you this email. I have changed the names for you already, girl. You can call me Rose. I have been with my husband for eight years now. I am 25. I only was 16 when we first got together. And to be honest, I lied about my age. It was only 21 days to my 17th birthday, but I told him I was turning 18. You can call him Chuck, and he is 43 years old now. Okay, listen. Did the bitch say she lied about she lied about her age? She was 16 at the time, and now she is 25. So what is that? Nine years later, right? Okay, so. So, Chuck is 43, which means he is 18 years older than her. So, nine years ago, Chuck as was 27, and she was 16. Not cool. Not cool at all. Right? He's, he's 18 years older than her. Well, he's eight, yeah, yeah, whatever. Definitely not. Mm, right? Yeah, yeah. 
So, okay, first of all, Chuck is 43 years old now. Anyway, well, Chuck and I have been together ever since the day we first met. We have had our hard times like any other couple, but we pulled through them. Chuck even got into some trouble and went to prison for two years, but I was there every visit. I worked my ass off to make sure he had everything he needed and money on the phone to call home every day. It wasn't easy, but April, I did it and did not complain once. I went out. I even went out and put money down on SUV for him. So when he came home, he would have transportation. I did all of this for him, not only out of love, but because he is a type that would give me the world if it was possible. He has never missed a birthday, anniversary, or any holiday without showering me with the things I like. He is truly my best friend and my lover. Oh, okay. When Chuck came home at the end of 2017, he got a job within three days of being home out of prison. He worked and helped me with everything. It felt almost perfect. Then something started to change. He was spending money real fast and had nothing to show for it. I found myself paying for almost everything again as if I was alone. One day, Chuck called, from, called me from work telling me that his SUV was being repossessed. I was at work freaking out because this had to be the same, some type of mistake. When I told him not to worry that I was going to call the finance company and fix this, he admitted that he hadn't paid the car note in over 90 days. I was so confused. Not only was this bad for my credit, but where had his money been going? So I turned into Inspector Gadget. I felt like he had to have someone else and was giving them money or something of the sort. I checked his phone records and saw that every day when he got out off of work, he would call the same certain phone number, but the call would only last for two minutes at most. I asked him about it and he said it was just a guy he worked with. But that wasn't enough for me. I kept asking and he finally told me he had a drug problem and that the guy was his drug dealer. I apologize if y'all hear the noise. That's the wind outside. Like it's 80 degrees and it's, that's the wind y'all hear. And it, yeah. April, I was crushed. He had this problem before we... Hold on, guys. Dang. I'm sorry, guys. It got so windy and I had my balcony door open that my balcony furniture table went flying across the balcony. Okay. And it's like blew some stuff down in my room. So, okay. Anyway. Oh, wow. Where was I? This is interesting. Okay. okay where was I? So I turned into Inspector Gadget, okay? I felt like he had to have been get, have someone else and he was giving them money or something. I checked his phone records and saw that every day when he got off of work, he would call a certain phone number. But the call would only last for two minutes at most. I asked him about it and he said it was this guy that he worked with, but that wasn't enough for me. And I kept asking until he finally told me he had a drug problem and that the guy was his drug dealer. I, I was crushed, April. He had this problem before we met, but he had been clear and clean for, for years. He somehow relapsed. I don't know what to do. So I did absolutely nothing. I let him keep using and said nothing. I feel so dumb just typing this now. Well, Chuck's problem never got better. It is even worse now. He can't hold a job. He gets in debt with dealers all around town. So after me having to pay his last debt, I put my foot down and said he was going to rehab or I was going to leave him. He told me he would go. That was on a Friday. He told me that he wanted to go see his mother on Saturday for Mother's Day. I didn't go because I hate his family and they hate me. They live about two hours away from the town that we live in. He took my car and left. When it was around 9 p.m., I called to see when he was coming home. He told me that he was on his way. I checked his location and saw that he was on the interstate coming my way. So I believed him. After two hours, I called him again, but the phone was off. I called all night looking for him and never got an answer. Sunday morning, Mother's Day, I get a call from Chuck. I was so relieved that he was okay. Then he asked me what I wait for him. Whoa. Then he asked me what I wait for him. Said that he needed to get his life together. In anger that he would even, in anger that he would even ask that question, I said no. He told me that my car was parked in front of my job and that he was going back with his father. I tried to ask questions, but he hung up on me. I went and got my car 
and it was there with his phone inside. He hasn't called since. It's Wednesday and I'm worried sick and missing my best friend. I can't stop crying. I called his family, but they won't even answer my calls. April, please help. I need your help. What should I do? Should I wait or move on? Was was that his way of breaking up with me? I'm crushed and sometimes I feel like I can't even breathe. Thanks in advance for any advice. Wow. This is so sad because poor Rose, she has been with this man for nine years um, since she's been 16. She's 25 years old now. He's 43. They've been together since then. They don't have no kids together because she did not mention any. But he has went to jail and she has busted her ass and saved her money. And she got him this nice ass SUV. Okay, this is a motherfucking Jeep Wrangler. The, the all metal joints bitch okay i wanted this motherfucking truck do you know how bad i want this motherfucking truck bitch i'll come over and rub your feet and stuff if you buy me you motherfucking one like this nigga don't know how good he got it like and he got some nice ass rims on this shit too like for real like Wow, is this a Jeep? I'm, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is a Jeep Wrangler. No, no. It looks like it, either it's a Patriot or whatever. Either way, it's a nice ass car, a nice ass ride for somebody who just unappreciatively up and left her out of the middle of nowhere. Kind of like abandoned and deserted her. You know what I'm saying? Which is kind of really like disappointing to me. And you know, He's showing me, she's showing me gifts that he's giving to her and everything. And it's nice, but you know what? It's nice when you get gifts from someone. It's nice when, you know what I'm saying, they buy you things, they take you out, they treat you. It's, that's really nice. That's really, really nice. But does it compensate for the respect or the morale? Like I'm saying, like, Everybody loves flowers, candy, gifts, whatever. But at the end of the day, does that really mean that the person really loves you? And is it does it really mean that the person is really being honest to you and truthful and has your best interest at heart? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so here it is. Rose been with this man for nine years. You know, apparently he's had a drug problem before she's but when she first got with him. And he'd been clean and stuff like that. And he went to jail. So I'm not sure when he went to jail jail or when he got clean. But honey, if he went to jail for two years and some of the some and if he went in and he was dirty, like unclean, then bitch, yeah, he got clean because he was in jail. That's the one thing that I don't like when people tell me. Like my husband used to tell me that because you know my husband used to drink and thank god he does not drink at all anymore like you could drink in front of him and it does not even bother him but you know like with people like himself you know when they go to jail and they always clean in the fifth or they're basically like well um i haven't i haven't had a drink in months i i don't drink no more yeah my nigga yeah g money you don't drink no more you so right my nigga yes you don't drink no more because since when do they serve cocktails in the motherfucking prison i ain't seen no motherfucking cocktail margarita sex on the beach or any motherfucking henny on the motherfucking food line on orange is the new black okay or any other jail show so yeah that's the one thing that irritates me i don't smoke no more i don't drink no more i don't do drugs no more okay yeah um obviously you are in prison and yeah don't get it twisted don't let's not get it fucked up because niggas do they will have drugs up in prison and drinks too. But, you know, that's a little bit more work than just getting it off the tray at, at chow time. Okay? We're not in the yard drinking together. We in the motherfucking cell sneaking that shit and making it in the toilet and shit. So it's not the same thing. So it's not as easy. You know what I'm saying? But... I just can't stand when motherfuckers do that. So here it is. Rose been with this man. He went to jail. She held it down. She said she bust her ass and bought him a ride. Make sure there was money on the phone. Make sure he had food, commissary visits, everything. She did all of that. Okay. And got him a whip for when he had transportation when he came out. That's nice. Because like she said, he would give her the clothes off of his back and anything, the world, if he could. Because that's like her best friend. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. You're really nice, and I like the things that you have said to me about him. However, underneath that nice little scaly, slimy skin of his, 
he was using and hitting the motherfucking pipe. Now, I don't know what type of drugs he's on. He could be a pill popper. He could be a sniffer. He could be a shooter. Who knows? Either way, he's using something that ain't good for him. And obviously, it's not good for Rose either because now she the one sitting at home all by herself, like home alone. Okay? The bitch is looking out the windows trying to figure out when motherfucking... What's his name? What did she call him? Because I forgot what she called him. Um, Let's see. What did she call him? Because if she didn't call him something, we're going to call him. Okay. Chuck. Yes. So Rose is looking out the window for Chuck to walk down that motherfucking pathway and say, hey, baby, I'm home. But what did he do? He went to see his mother the day before Mother's Day, which is like a little bit over a two-hour drive, and took Rose's car. However, that... Friday, the day before, he was supposed to check himself into rehab, but, you know, he didn't. He wanted to go see his mother. That's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead. Go say bye to your mammy. Tell her happy Mother's Day before you go into the rehab. Rose didn't go because she said his family don't like her, and she certainly don't like their motherfucking asses neither, but he took her car. Now, I don't know why he didn't take his truck because, you know what I'm saying, oh, that's right, it got repossessed. Okay, yes. So, he took her truck, all right? And he drove her down there, told her he was on her way, his way back home. She looked up on his location and found out that, you know, he's on the way towards her. Now, first of all, bitch, when you said you looked up his location, I don't know. Does, is this a GPS on your car or is she sharing your location? Is he sharing his location with you on his iPhone device? Because let me tell you, that... You know, y'all know I just got this iPhone for the first time. This is not really my first iPhone because I lied. I had the iPhone 4. But that don't even count for much or anything. It can't even count. That was like forever ago. So, you know. But, and I don't even think they had this feature on there then. But share my location. I turned that off. And also, people can tell if you got their text message and stuff. First of all, I don't like those type of phones. I don't like that when you can tell me. That you can tell that I read your message. Because first of all, there are people that text me like my cousin who I really don't want to be bothered with. I think I told y'all this last week. So I'm going to leave you on red. But I don't really want you to know that it's on red. So I'm going to turn my location and privacy off to certain people. Because I just don't really want you in my business. So now I'm trying to figure out, Rose. How did you find his location? You know, the world is just too much nowadays. It's too much technology out here to where we can find out where our family members, our friends are, or somebody we just don't motherfucking like. And that's crazy because it's an invasion of privacy. And I really don't like people to know where the fuck I'm at at all times. That's a lot of the reasons why I don't post on social media. But she did, Rose did ask Chuck, where was he? Where's he at? You know what I'm saying? Currently, she didn't even ask him that. She just found out on her own good good terms, okay? And so she figured he was on his way home. Never made it home. Actually called her the next morning and let her know, your car is at your job. I ain't coming the fuck back. I'm going back with my dad. Are you going to wait for me because I'm a crackhead and I need to get myself clean? That's not exactly what he said, but it's in those words. I'm just, I'm just kind of like gassing it up for you guys. That's what the fuck he said, okay? That's what the fuck he said. So he left her. And not only did he leave her and the car that's hers, he also left his cell phone in the car. So basically, it's like this, bitch, you cannot even contact me. I don't even want to see you. I don't even want to be bothered with you. I think that's kind of fucked up. Um... She's She's been trying to get in touch with him. She's called his family. They're not taking her calls. I think, I think for real, that's really fucked up to do to somebody that's held you down and been there with you since day one. You know what I'm saying? I understand nobody's perfect. There's no person in this world that's perfect except me. No, I'm only fucking with y'all. There is nobody perfect. And for him to go and just abandon her like that with no type of reason or explanation. And like, I don't really find his explanation of, well, I got to get my life together. I got to get clean. 
um, are you going to wait for me? I don't really find that as an excuse. Like, okay, so you're a drug addict. She tried to help you. She was there for you. And now you just want to leave her by herself, not even a goodbye, no explanation. You're not coming to get your thing. So basically you're just going to abandon everything that you have at the home front and just go back with your, with your, with your daddy at 43 years old. You're going to go back home with your daddy and not face the fucking real truth. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you, Rose, I understand you love him. That's your best friend. Trust me. I get that. I've had that. I've, I've had that same thing in my life, which was my, my, my husband who is now my ex-husband, who is now my fiance. I know you probably might be a little bit confused, everybody, but I'm going to tell you guys just like this. That's my ex-husband that I'm with. We were divorced at my, uh, on my accord. I, I, I got those papers served up. Okay. However, we got back together like two years after my divorce and we've been back together ever since. So, and now we are engaged. So yeah, that's where we are. But I just feel like when you hold somebody down and you help them see fit, you see, you're just with them through everything, you know what I'm saying? You give them your heart, your finances, you give them trust, you trust them. You give them basically open arms to you, your life. They have assess they are accessible. You're accessible to them basically. Like, you know what I'm saying? You are available to that person. And not only are you available Co like wholeheartedly, but mentally as well. You know what I'm saying? And I think that it's fucked up for you to just be able to just get up and walk out of somebody's life with no explanation and no type of, you don't feel no type of remorse. Like this lady held you down. She bought you a brand new car, saved up for that shit. And all this nigga Chuck did was not make the car payments for three months and had the car repo. Now, let me tell y'all, that's one thing that I just don't fuck with. I don't fuck with things that come to finances. If I got a car, I'm going to need to be able to get in that shit the next morning. I don't want to come outside in my driveway and I'm looking for my car and I'll see that shit. And then I start looking for it again and shit. Like, you know, you ever had that moment? Because I've had that moment. Because Not because my car was repo, but because my husband took my car in the middle of the night because he was drunk. Like, okay. And I went in the driveway and I didn't see that shit. And I kept looking in the driveway and I still didn't see that shit. And then I started walking in the driveway and I still didn't see that shit. It was like, yo, you know that shit ain't there, bitch. Okay. So that's how it is. You know what I'm saying? She done spent all this money on this nigga, this man, this grown man at 43 years old. And he threw it all out the window. That's the fucked up thing about drugs. It'll make you not even care. Not about yourself, not about your friends, not about your family, not about your kids, not about your job, not about nothing. Drugs will make you care about nothing. You'll look like shit. You won't even care about your appearances. I have seen beautiful women go from beautiful women to motherfucking ugly ducklings because of pills, drugs, anything. And it's sad. And it hurts me and it saddens me to have to be to have to speak with someone like that or look at them because it just hurts. It really, really hurts. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really understand why there are so many people that are on drugs and they feel like they they, they, their, their tolerance level is like 110%. Like they can't get addicted to the shit. You ever meet someone that just like, oh, it's not going to affect me like that. I can't, I ain't going to get addicted to it. I can stop. You ever meet those people? I think that is every drug addict. Every drug addict says that they have to, because had they said, yeah, I know I'm going to get addicted to it. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have taken it. But it's sad that, you know, saying drugs can tear a person's entire life apart like seriously it can pick apart your life like a fucking old scab you know what i'm saying like it's a hard thing and honestly rose for you to want to wait for him me personally i'm gonna say this you are 25 and he is 43 years old. 
I mean, age has no limit, no number. Love has no limit, no number. You know, say age is just a number like everyone says, but that is true. But that is not what you can tell a pedophile. Okay. I mean, they, they'll take that shit and run with it. A pedophile will take that shit and run with it all day. But let's just be realistic. You were 16 and he was 25. Even if you was about to be 17 years old and he thought that, I wouldn't have fucked with you. That's just disgusting. A 25-year-old mixing with a 17-year-old or a 16-year-old, that's just disgusting. Like, you are a grown-ass man, a whole grown-ass man. Whether or not you act like one, whether or not you mature like one or not, you still a grown-ass man. And you should be ashamed of yourself to even want to fuck with someone who's 16 years old at the age of 25. And if she told him she was 17, he still should be ashamed for himself. And if you found out the truth, the nigga, my nigga, my G, you should have, because he's an OG, you definitely should have been man enough and mature enough to walk away from the situation. You know what I mean? But that's not him. I mean, listen, there's to each is to own. And like I said, the age is just a number that is true, but then there are laws, okay? There are laws, and there are certain type of people that you just really want to be careful with. You don't really want them around your kids. But here it is, this girl, she has scrimped and saved and busted her ass. She said, I work my ass off to make sure that money was spent, sent to him and all this shit. Like, okay, listen. <sighs> I get it. You in love. You love him. Y'all been together nine years. Long, but not long. Second of all, I'm going to just say this right here. I don't give a fuck what the nigga gave me. I don't care if he bought me Valentine's Day gifts, birthday gifts, Mother's Day gifts, fucking um, good absence in school gifts, okay? Motherfucking, I lost a couple of pounds gifts. I don't really give a shit what type of gifts it was. Just because he's done all this for you does not mean that you have to do the same in return for him. Yes, it is to, we, we are equal. When you're in a relationship, it's supposed to be equal. But if your ass go to jail on purpose for some shit that you had no business motherfucking doing, I'm not about to bust my ass for you and fucking save and scrimp and save so you can have a better ride than mine. Because I guarantee you guys, his car is better than hers. I've seen her car. She put a picture of her car in there for Valentine's Day with the gifts on it. Her car is nice. Don't get me wrong, but his car is way better than hers. And I'm not trying to dish you, but let's be realistic. I, I would have saved that money and got that truck for myself. And that nigga would have been driving my Eclipse because that's what you had. That's what I seen she had. So it's nothing wrong with the car. But I just feel like if you're going to bust your ass, bust your ass for yourself. Not for someone who is purposely in jail, who is purposely in jail for things he had no business to doing. That means he hasn't grown up yet. That means he's immature. That means he's kind of like dragging the relationship down somewhat. You know what I'm saying? Like, bust your ass? Honey, he wasn't busting his ass for you. That's why he ended up in jail. And now it's sad because you done busted your ass. You done bought him this car. He hasn't made the payments in three months. So now it's repo, which means they took the money that you scrimped and saved up, you know what I'm saying, and put into this little account for this car for him. They done took that and wiped their ass with it, your ass with it, They baby mama ass, They boss, They supervisors, They colleagues, and their kids at home's asses with that money that you then spent every month on that car that was repossessed for him. What a waste of motherfucking money. That's sad, but what a waste of motherfucking money. Then on top of that, he doesn't pay that, and then he goes and lies and says that he's going to go visit his mother, knowing damn well he wasn't coming back at all to go to rehab. That was just a plot, and then left his cell phone in the car so that way she wouldn't be able to get in touch with him. What's a coward to do, okay? Real motherfucking cowardly move, dude. So he left his phone in her car so that way she wouldn't get in touch with him. Real motherfucking cowardly. You asking me, Rose, should you get back with this motherfucker? No. Nope. I don't give a fuck if he bought you teddy bears galore, flowers, candy, motherfucking Sharpays, Sharpies, motherfucking hair nets, wig caps, wigs. I don't really care what the fuck he bought you. There was no reason for him to do you like that. How dare he after you that held him down through his good and bad times. And then he want to take the easy route out of it and stay with his family who he know that you don't like and they don't like you. So that way he doesn't have to face the fire, which is you. Let me tell you something. Once a crackhead, always a motherfucking crackhead. And I'm sorry to say that to so for anybody who has been an ex-drug addict and you ain't no more. I apologize. It's no shady shit. But you know what? He was shady for that. And he know he's dead wrong. And 
For one, he's a drug addict, sweetheart. You know, I really feel like he needs to go ahead and get himself clean and together. And he's not going to be able to do that with you involved. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, you were sitting there and you wasn't saying anything about it, which is fine. Some people aren't able to cope with it and handle it. Some people aren't able to deal with that person that's on the drugs, especially if they're in their immediate family or they love one or whatever. So she left it alone in hopes and pray of the prayer that Chuck was going to stop eventually. But he did it. He got worse. But that's not her fault. I'm not even going to blame Rose for that shit because he's his own man. And ain't nobody put no motherfucking gun to his head and say, you better sniff this motherfucker or shoot it up or whatever. Ain't nobody tell him that shit. He did that shit on his own. However, I will say this, Rose. Don't be no motherfucking fool, no foolio, and be like, okay, baby, I'm going to wait for you until you get out. You already done did that. So while he's get, he there getting himself clean, who's supposed to hold him down? You? Because that's why he asked you that question. Are you going to wait until he gets out? And once you said no, that's when he left the phone in the car and was like, fuck you, bitch, since you ain't really trying to wait for me and help me like I want you to, then I'm not fucking with you no more. That's just how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Like he didn't cut off all ties and communications with you. Therefore, maybe the fuck you need to do the same. Stop being so available for these people, these men and these women, okay? When you get stepped on and walked on like a motherfucking front door doormat that says welcome, not hunty. That's when you have to put your motherfucking guard way the fuck up and let motherfuckers know I'm not the one. I'm not having it. You got the wrong bitch for that today. Nigga, I wish you would step the fuck off. Adios, senorita. Adios, senora. Feliz Navidad. Okay? All that good shit to everybody. All right? It's about self-love. Okay, honey? Rose. I get that. He is the first, probably the first real relationship you've ever had because you were 16. And of course, he's going to make you fall in love with him because he's 25 years old. He's molding you like you are a fucking puppet. And that's what he's gotten right now. He's allowed himself to allow you to treat him nice, buy him gifts, hold him down. A real man would not allow a woman to bust they ass every motherfucking day to make sure that he got book money on the commissary and fucking snacks and shit while he in jail. Let me tell you this much. You get three square meals in jail every motherfucking day. Nigga, you don't need no snacks. If you need snacks, you better go fucking t brush up a toilet bowl or do some kind of uh, extra chores in the jail to get you a fucking toasty or tasty cake. I, I, listen... I'm all for helping people, but some people, you just keep going above and beyond for them, and they just don't get it, and you keep going above and beyond for them, and they just don't get it. That's when you got to step the fuck off and be like, oh, you want some chips up there in the in the cell, too? Nigga, you ain't going to have some chips today. The only chips you're going to have is the motherfucking paint that chipped off that wall. Now, dip that in some motherfucking salsa and tell me how you like it. Niggas always feel like they entitled to some shit when they're in jail. They feel like they should have commissary. They should have phone calls, like Rose says, so he can call home every day. First of all, Rose, let me ask you this. You busted your ass every day to pay his bill, okay? His bill. He didn't even pay you no motherfucking mind. So every day you busted his ass so he can call home every day. What the fuck a nigga in jail got to call home for every day? What does he really got to talk about? He ain't got much going the fuck on. He didn't ever have much going on in the first fucking place. That's why his ass landed up in jail in the first place. I'm sorry, but I don't really want to talk to somebody that's in jail. I don't want to talk to you every day. Now, Gwen, don't get me wrong. I just love to speak to my husband, but I don't need to talk to you every fucking day. What you want to talk about? What y'all have for child? Who took a shower first? Who was using the bathroom? What? Who got a letter in the mail? What you did and did not get for commissary and what you want to get? Nigga, please. I'm not about to bust my ass for somebody that's in jail who did not bust they ass really for me. You can tell me all day that that nigga gave you teddy bears, balloons, candy, soda pop, hip hop, love on a motherfucking yacht. I just made all that up, okay? I don't care. That's what he should do when he cares about somebody. But obviously, he didn't really give you too much love and affection because you couldn't trust him. Because had you trusted him, then you would have knew all the shit that he was doing behind your back. But you didn't because he was being sneaky and deceitful. 
So therefore, Chuck is a no-no. Should you wait for him? No. Should you get over and move on? Yes. You know, he's too old and then he's not too old. And I get it. It's just a number. However, as long as you allow the person to continuously hurt you and walk all over you, sweetheart, they're going to do that. If he knows he has a good thing at home and it'll still be there waiting for him when he's done and he's done trying to get himself together, which he still ain't, he'll come back to you. You know what I'm saying? Will you want him back then? Maybe just not because you'll have more debt. Let me tell you. Let me say this. I'd rather do bad on my own than with somebody else. When you have another person in your life and they ain't doing shit, that is just more work for you, more money out your pocket. It's not worth it. I'd rather do bad by myself, all by myself. And then I think about it like this. When they say, I'd rather do bad all by myself, you're not really doing bad when you by yourself because it's just you. Of course, you're doing bad, but it's just you. So what do you need to worry about it so much for? It's just you. You cannot take advantage of your own self unless you really are some type of weirdo. But on some real shit, Rose, I would leave him alone. If he's abandoned you like that, where he's left the phone in the car, that means he don't want to be contacted. And you know something? I wouldn't want to contact him either. It makes it more fucked up because here it is. You don't know if he's okay or not. And it's kind of like left you in limbo. However, if he knows this about you and he knows how much you care for him and he's left you in limbo like this, then sweetheart, you're really not a concern to him as much as he's not a concern to his own self, which means this. Take your little fucking clogs, put them on your feet, sweetheart. Look down, make sure there ain't nothing stopping your path and walk on, okay? Walk the fuck on. So, you guys, let Rose know what you, you would do. That's just my opinion. Fuck Chuck, all right? With two middle fingers, fuck Chuck. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I love you guys, and I will see you guys soon. I gotta go cook dinner and stuff, too. I'm gonna make some baked chicken breasts something like that. I'm so tired. I love you and I'll see you soon.